simply in a soap based web services, the end to end flow from consumer application till the producer, consumer sending the request to the server application, and producer sending the response back to the client. So we can see the end to end flow. So, how the SOAP message is transported over the network and how the XML message will be added to a SOAP and everything we will discuss in this. Okay. So, let us first discuss about the web services aspect which we have discussed already. Correct. Right. Now, this is basically the registry where it hosts the service description. Okay. So, who publishes this? Producer publishes, publishes this information. So, what is the responsibility of the producer here? First, create a web service, define a service interface. Third one, create a web service description in a standard format, which is a digital document, and publish that into a repository. Okay, now once you have this digital document available in the repository or the registry. Now, the, what the consumer would do? Consumer would find for the service description. So, once he finds the service description, now he can find with the producer. See about this? Okay. So, let us move ahead and discuss about how to develop web services. Okay. First, there are two phases for developing web services. The first phase is the preparation phase and second phase is the execution phase. Now what is this preparation phase? Now first thing is based upon the visual document. Now visual document is something which is common between a producer application and as well as a consumer application. So now in this preparation phase what we do is the consumer generates client side networking code and whereas the producer at his end generates a networking code. Now this client side we call it as a sub and server side we call it as a center. So this is the preparation phase. Now once we are done with the preparation phase, then it's the execution phase. Now it means that at the client end you have executed the method. Now you are in the runtime environment. Now you are you are in the execution phase. It means that interaction between the client application and the server application. Okay, so let's talk about preparation phase at the producer end. So what does the producer do? What is the responsibility? First, a producer would create a service interface, service implementation, and it creates an endpoint interface. And after that, it creates a visual document. Okay, so now once he does this, the next step is using a web services runtime. So what do you mean by web services runtime? Like we have some engines like Apache Access 2 and Apache CXS. Using these engines, what we what does the producer do? Producer generates a networking code. Now here the visual document, if you look at it, the web services runtime takes input as a digital document and it generates this networking code. Clear? Okay. The next now here, this networking code is aware how to talk to a requester or a consumer. This we call it as a skeleton. Okay. Now, coming to the consumer code. Now, what the consumer does? Consumer, now consumer either finds a visual document from the repository or to other, to other means he gets a visual document. Once he gets the visual document, what does he do? He uses the web service runtime and he uses the digital, same digital document provided by the producer and he generates the networking code. Now this networking code can actually interact with the producer, producer networking code. Now this we call it as a sub. And once he does, once he, uh, once he is done with this, what is the third step he does? He writes the consumer code. What do you mean by consumer code? Now it is invocation of the service method. Right? Okay. Now this is a preparation phase. Now here by now, client has a stub which is a networking code and server or a producer has a 
networking code which we call it as a skeleton, now both can interact with each other. The client invokes a method or a proxy method, proxy service method. Now networking code at the client side end will make a network call to a service provider. And service provider networking code will take it and finally turn the processing for you. And the real business logic would be executed there. So in the next phase, we will talk about the execution. So this is at the end. Now here, in the preparation phase, if you look at it, producers will develop a web service and we describe the web service in a visual document. A service provider using the runtime environment it generates the networking code. Now this code is can talk to the consumer. Right? Now what does client does or a consumer does? Consumer using the web services runtime and using the visual document what the producer has created, it, it generates the networking code. Now this networking code is capable enough to interact with the producer. Now at the end, the client will write the client code for invoking the web service. So this is the end of a preparation phase. So now we will see the execution phase. Okay. So now let us take a simple scenario. Now at the client end and at the service provider end, both have the infrastructure ready. So now what we need to have, what we need to do is we need to invoke the web service. Okay, let us take this scenario. The scenario is, Techform is developing an online booking bookstore in Java, and book prices changes day to day, and Techform decides to use the Amazon Web Service, which provides book, pro book prices by passing the ISBN number as a parameter. Okay, now here, who is the provider and who is the consumer? Amazon is the provider and Techform is the consumer, right? Okay. So now let us see Techform sends the request. So what happens? Now by now you have an infrastructure ready. You have a sub and skeleton. So Amazon has a skeleton and you Techform has a sub. Right. Now consumer invokes the service method. Now this is a proxy method. Once it invokes the service method, what happens? Now surely, now you are passing a request information, okay, as an object. Now you have created a book request as an object and you have passed the ISBN number there. Okay, now that object is serialized to an XML message. Now this XML message will be added as a part of SOAP envelope to a body of a SOAP envelope and the SOAP envelope will become payload of HTTP request packet and over the wire to the, net, in, to the internet the request receives the other end which is the service provider end. Okay. Now this service provider receives, once it receives the HTTP request packet that, that is this, that it deserializes and it pulls the soap envelope out. And again, the soap envelope is again the external message is removed from the soap envelope. Now, once you get the external message, the deserialization happens and that converts to a Java object, which is a request object. Now, this object contains what? It contains the ISBN number. Now, once the ISBN number is received, at the server service endpoint, the real business logic is invoked. Now, once it invokes the business logic, finally you got the book price. Let's say like hundred dollars or something. Okay, now this consumer end we call it as a stuff and the producer end we call it as a skeleton. So clear about this slope. So this is at the tech one selling a request to Amazon. So now Techform receives a request from Amazon, right? So now the service provider generates the response. Now the real business logic of the service end has been invoked. So maybe the prices are maintained at the database of Amazon. Now the search has happened and the price of the book has been determined. 
and now the price has to send back to a tech wall which is a consumer okay so once the service provider generates the response now the response will be in the object format okay now this object format will be serialized to an xml message now this xml message will be added to a scope body and the soap body will become a payload of soap envelope will become a payload of HTTP response packet. Now the HTTP response packet is transported over the wire to another network to a consumer. The consumer receives the HTTP response packet. The consumer application or web services runtime removes the soap envelope from HTTP response packet. And again the XML message is removed from the soap envelope. So finally, the XML message is deserialized to a Java, to an object. And now, the client application, once it receives the object, what does it do? Using that information, you do whatever you do. Right? So this we call it as a skeleton and this is a 